Hi, I'm Vicki Mates, and I'm a park ranger here in Yosemite. Today I'd like to talk with you about one of Yosemite's most famous hikes, Half Dome. Now Half Dome is one of the most striking features on the Yosemite landscape. It's not only inspired adventuresome spirits to climb it and to hike it, but also geologists to study it, and artists to capture its unique beauty on canvas and on film. Hiking this Yosemite icon is an extraordinary accomplishment, and it can create a memory of a lifetime. But Half Dome is an extremely challenging hike, and it can be dangerous. You must be prepared in order to have a safe and enjoyable hike. The Half Dome hike is one of the longest and steepest day hikes that you're likely to encounter in a national park. It's a 14 mile round trip and gains nearly 5,000 feet in elevation. This is more than double the distance and elevation gain as most difficult hikes in Yosemite. Plus, it requires a mountaineering component at the end, climbing the cables. If you have an intense fear of heights, the cables will present a great challenge to you. Keep in mind that most people need 12 hours to hike to the top of Half Dome and back before dark. So start this hike at dawn or just before. Here's what to expect along this trail. The hike begins along the Mist Trail, which follows the Merced River up hundreds of steps to the top of Vernal Fall. This section alone keeps the Yosemite Search and Rescue Team busy each summer with injured knees and ankles. The Search and Rescue Team responds to about 100 incidents each year along the Half Dome Trail. We see a lot of situations that are caused by people slipping simply because they're not wearing appropriate footwear. And along the trail, there are several spots where the rock is guaranteed to be wet and slippery. So make sure you wear hiking shoes with good traction. Tennis shoes are not good enough. After you reach the top of Vernal Fall, the trail continues up another steep section of stairs to the top of Nevada Fall. Remember to be very careful when you're near the water. It's extremely cold and swift. The hike just to the top of Nevada Fall is already considered a long, difficult day hike. And what may surprise you is that it's not even half the distance to the top of Half Dome. Beyond the top of Nevada Fall, you'll encounter a long, sandy, hot section through Little Yosemite Valley. Each year, hikers call for ranger assistance on this part of the trail because they're dehydrated. The average person needs to drink at least a gallon of water during this hike. That equals about four one-liter bottles. A sun hat and sunscreen will also keep you more comfortable during this section of the hike. And I'd also like to point out that if you're refilling your water bottles with a water filter, the Merced River in Little Yosemite Valley is the last reliable water source. We see a lot of dehydration and exhaustion generally caused by people not eating enough food or drinking enough water. We also see people simply not being fit enough to hike the distance that they've chosen to go that day and not realizing when they start to feel poorly that the best idea is to turn around and head back down rather than push yourself to go further. As the trail climbs out of Little Yosemite Valley, you are now, finally, halfway to the top. You are also well into Yosemite's designated wilderness, where you are surrounded by the sights and sounds of the natural world. The next four miles travel up through a forest environment, and then you arrive at the subdome. Now most visitors have heard of the Half Dome cables, but climbing the subdome to the base of the cables is nearly as serious as the cables themselves. The climb is similar to climbing the hundreds of steps of the Mist Trail, only now the steps are at 8,000 feet in elevation, where the air is thinner and the breathing can be harder. 
From here, the remainder of the trail is above treeline and totally exposed to the weather. If there are clouds overhead, it may be unsafe for you to continue. If the weather is cooperative and you continue up the subdome, you will arrive at the cables. The cables are in place from late May to early October, and they are not for the out of shape or the faint of heart. They're vertical and exposed, and surprisingly much harder to go down than they are to go up. It is extremely dangerous to use the cables during storms, even whenever it's just raining lightly. We're now going to hear from a park ranger who can attest to how frightening the cables can be during bad weather. My name is Steve Bumgardner. I'm a videographer for the park, and I was shooting on the top of Half Dome on a July morning when a thunderstorm rolled in very quickly. The threat of lightning was very real, and everyone on the summit decided that they should go down. The problem was it began to rain at the same time. Once water falls on that um, route where the cables are, it becomes incredibly slick. The cable itself is very difficult to hold on to when it's wet, and the fear of falling led to basically a traffic jam on the cables. So once we were stuck on the cables, we then became very exposed to the risk of lightning. And the cables themselves became electrified. My metal frame pack began shocking me. People's hair began to stand up on end. And the fear in my gut grew very rapidly. I think that experience really opened my eyes to how dangerous Half Dome can be and how serious the threat of weather is. Most deaths and injuries on Half Dome have happened when the rock is wet. So check the weather before you hike. In the summer, mornings can be deceptively clear and warm, but in the afternoon, cold rain and lightning can quickly move in. It's a really good idea to bring along extra layers of clothing to keep you warm and dry on this hike. Also remember to bring along the usual supplies for any day hike, like ample food, a first aid kit, and a whistle. From the top of Half Dome, there are a few things to know about your return trip. Once you're at the top, you are only halfway done with your hike. You still need to descend 5,000 vertical feet and seven miles. So again, it's important to leave early in the morning when you start this hike and plan the timing of your return accordingly. Most of the emergency incidents that we respond to happen when people think that their day's over, they're heading back down the trail, they achieved their point that they intended to get to and they forget to take care of themselves as they continue back to the valley floor. Everyone in your group should carry a flashlight or a headlamp with fresh batteries. On most summer nights, you can head out on the trail and find hikers without a flashlight, trying to find their way down in the dark. Don't find yourself in this predicament. To sum up, Half Dome is a spectacular hike, full of waterfalls, quiet forests, and breathtaking views. With a little bit of planning and preparation, you can greatly increase your chances of having a safe experience. I hope you have a great Yosemite visit and a wonderful Half Dome hike. We'll see you on the trail. <laughs>